Okay, team, we're going to look at that same idea of how decoding supports fluency and leads to comprehension. And we're going to think back to what we did with decoding and phonics and, and go back to um, um, looking at phonics skills invol involving syllable types. Remember, we went through, let me let me jog your memory when we talk about syllable types, because we, we spent some time on that. But that was reviewing, you know, different types of syllable phonics patterns, right? Like these things here. And taking words so with syllable patterns like the silent E syllable pattern, or maybe uh, words with vowel team syllable patterns, or maybe words with uh, single syllable words or words with, you know, diphthongs or controlled R syllable patterns. So we know that by explicitly teaching phonics and these different types of syllable patterns, it's going to help students with uh, identifying words and decoding words. And by increasing their ability to decode words, and we use our, our diagram here, that's ultimately going to help them, right? That's going to help them with that decoding process. As they improve their, their decoding, they're going to be able to, um, they're going to be able to uh, um, spot words and pronounce words with the proper speed, accuracy, and expression. And that's going to lead to more comprehension. So, so decoding is going to build up fluency, which is going to lead to comprehension. All right, now let's take a look at number 39, building off that idea. Uh, take a minute, read it to yourself, maybe two minutes. Read it to yourself, and then we'll read it together, okay? Go ahead, read it now. A first grade, I'm going to read it with you. You can fast forward if you want to. A first grade teacher would like to promote students' development of accurate decoding to support their oral reading fluency and reading comprehension. So let me circle this, accurate decoding. That word accurate, right? There's, that's kind of a hint to, uh, a nod to fluency, right? Accuracy, uh, to support their oral reading fluency. That's definitely a fluency thing. And this is ultimately gonna read, uh, lead to comprehension, is that right? So when they're doing decoding, we want them to decode with accuracy, uh, and that's going to support their oral fluency or reading with the proper speed, accuracy, and expression. And, and we know that this is going to help with comprehension. The teacher can most effectively promote first graders' accurate accuracy. Again, accuracy. So accurate here, accuracy here. These are fluency ideas by teaching them to what? So how could you improve accuracy? Um, or accurate decoding? Uh, is it teach them uh, semantic and syntactical context clues uh, in a text to identify words? I love it. Love this question. We get to review new words, semantic and syntactical context clues. What are those? Let me give you an example. If I had a sentence, if a student was reading a sentence and they had a, a sentence like this, um, um, I walk, uh, my, that's my dog and they miss, and I'm sorry the the, the, the drawing is tool is not uh, great today. Um, they miss, uh, pronounce the word dog. And instead of saying dog, they say, uh, dog, right. And, and when they read that sentence, I like to walk my dog. Well, what happens? Well, they're like, hmm, dog doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. So they go and they look for surrounding words in the sentence to help make sense of the miscue. Because I like to walk my dog doesn't make any sense. They're scratching their head. Well, they're in their mind, they're scratching their head. So they go and they look for like, what would you, what, what, what could make sense? And they're like, walk. Oh. I'm not going to walk my dog. I'm going to walk my dog. So walk becomes a clue, or we call it a semantic context clue that helps us make sense of a miscue. So a semantic context clue is a surrounding word or phrase that helps us self-correct a miscue. It helps it make sense of a miscue. So you got that? So semantic context clues are clues in a sentence that help you self-correct a miscue that doesn't make sense. The key word is it doesn't make sense. Okay, now that's semantic context clue. Now, with that in mind, 
Let's do a syntactical uh, context clue. Uh, if we said this, um, if we were saying in a sentence here, uh, to, to, uh, let's say the sentence was boys uh, go to, I don't know, they go somewhere, right? But a student read to, and they read to boy. They said to boy go to, you know, school. Well, what's wrong with that? They drop the S in boys, right? And it doesn't sound right. When it doesn't sound right, meaning there's a, a grammatical mistake in, in, the, in the reading of the text. To boy go to school? Hmm, that doesn't sound right. Oh, to boys. The two and the S on boys become syntactical uh, context clues. Syntactical context clues are grammar clues that help um, fix uh, a miscue when that when you uh, you you pronounce you say a word and it doesn't sound correct because you made a grammatical error. So, so syntactical clues are grammar clues. Can you remember this? Uh, so look now back to the question. Uh, we're not doing semantic and syntactical context clues. That's not it. But you need to know what those are. Those are two really good strategies for word identification. Okay, these are this is like strategies that students use all the time to help uh, self-correct. In fact, they're probably the most common self-correcting strategies, right? In uh, in identifying words, when you make a miscue, often we go back and we look for semantic and syntactical context clues to fix the miscue. Okay, on your essays, you're going to see students use self-correcting and semantic and syntactical context clues all the time. You all are going to see that on your essays, okay? But you need to know what it is. But it's not really the answer to this question. But we got a review of these two words, so it's a win. Let's cross it out. It's not the answer to this question. Uh, we're trying to figure out how accuracy. What's why is what do they do to develop accuracy, which is connected to fluency? Um, apply phonics skill. Uh, how about this one? Memorize a set of grade level words on the classroom wall, word wall by theme. So grade level words, that is a what? That's probably referencing more of a high, I mean, I def it's definitely referencing, right? High frequency sight words, right? High frequency sight words, possibly, maybe. These are words that we want students to rapidly recognize in, uh, in the decoding process. We're not really, um, that's not that could help with fluency um, and it might overall help with build their overall accuracy this is true but that's really not um, this teachers you know uh, focused on accurate decoding they want to fi fix that accuracy in decoding and that's not really about memorizing these high frequency sight words because we're memorizing them we're not even worrying about decoding so it's not really c even though building up your high frequency sight word vocabulary would help with fluency. Okay, so A and C are gone. Let me clear this off. I love A, I love C, but they're not the right answers for this scenario. Is it B or D? Apply phonic skills and knowledge of common syllable types and inflections to read words, or is it D? Sound out the first letter of a word and then guess the uh, the word based on the text illustrations. Okay, so it's not D, but let's look at this here. Uh, this is when a student does that. When they when they look at the pictures of a text, and based off the pictures of the text, that's a cat, right? They see a picture of a cat, and then they're able to sound out the initial word in the word cat. And then they then they guess the word based off of the illustrations or pictures. That is that is at a very early stage in the word identification process, right? And we had that diagram way back when. And let me go back to it. Go back to this in word word recognition, right? Okay, so how about this one right here? Apply phonics skills and knowledge of common syllable types and inflections to read words. Team, isn't that awesome? 
So this is where the questions you see get more detailed. Like, like this one here was like, a, this. these are all saying the same. These questions that we're doing are all saying the same thing. This was like, um, you know, they lack fluency. How do we help them with fluency? Do decoding. And then this is basically saying the same the same thing, but it's a little bit more detailed. We want to build fluency. So we want to help them with their decoding. So what are we going to do? We're not just going to do decoding or phonics, right? We're not just going to do phonics, which involves decoding. But instead of saying like phonics and decoding and leaving it at that, they add in knowledge of syllable types, which is literally like vowel teams and diphthongs and diagraphs, which is decoding, right? And inflections, like when, how to interpret these different inflections and, and how to pronounce them depending on the word. So you see how they're getting more detailed? Instead of just saying fix their decoding or phonics to build accuracy, they're adding in these other phrases. And you need to be familiar with that stuff, okay? Team, this is a, an interesting question because the new questions on these exams, th this is an old question, 10 years old. Okay, very easy to spot the answers D, very easy. And this one's a, a, this one is a little harder, right? And we start to have new vocab and the stuff is there to um, maybe uh, it's different scenarios and it's kind of throwing you off with the different scenarios. So what you need to do is you need to be able to understand these scenarios so you could cross them out. And, oops, sorry, that was the right answer. You, be, you want to be able to cross out with, understand what the scenarios are so you can get to the right answer. The answer here is B. This is a really cool question. It reviews all these things. Uh, nope, sorry, wrong one. Ha, this one, ha, 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 B. It's from this test here. Okay, in thinking about this question here, uh, you need to, you should review common syllable types. Remember all these patterns that we did before? Should go back and review them because this is the stuff that would help a student build their accuracy, and ultimately their fluency. Cool. Are you enjoying this? Team, I know I'm trying to do different things in this class. I'm trying to give you questions and practice strategies, and I'm also trying to help you learn the language, which is why we are constantly circling back on this stuff. We circle back and review so you understand the language, so when you see the language on the test, right, you're able to cross out things that don't make sense. So we're trying to do, a, I'm trying to do a bunch of things with you here, and I hope it's working. You'll have to let me know. All right, team, the answer is B. Let's keep going.